Broadcasting from beautiful, tropical Vero Beach, Florida, it's Money Nation with Ed Gardner. Good morning and welcome to Money Nation. Today on Money Nation, we're going to talk about the restaurant industry. In particular, we're going to talk about the steak industry, steak houses. I grew up and uh, lived in the city for about a decade in my 20s and lived on 20th Street and 1st Avenue. We had some good uh, steak houses around. We had uh, the Palm up the street. We had Old Homestead uh, over on 9th Avenue, directly across from where I lived, and Smith & Wensky. And those were the kind of the neighborhood restaurants I went to, along with Gallagher's and Sparks. And back then, people always said the best steakhouse in Manhattan was in Brooklyn, Peter Luger's. Well, today's special guest is the general manager of River Palm Terrace in Edgewater, New Jersey, and I think they could have a case for the best steakhouse in uh, New York City. Steve and Russ, thank you for being with us on uh, Money Nation. Good morning. How are you today? Fantastic, Steve. Steve, why is, why is your steak so delicious? Why is it so good? I mean, this is where I go for my steak now. I don't go into the city anymore. I go to River Palm Terrace because it's incredible. What, 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 what sets you guys apart? Well, first of all, thank you for your support. We love it. Um, there is certain grades of beef um, that are designated choice, select, and prime. We only deal with prime. And we do a, a slow dry aging process in-house um, that tend, naturally tenderizes our steaks. And it's just, it's the best of the best. The top 3% of all the beef fabricated in the United States is graded prime. And that's all that we deal with. So that's a big difference right there. Now, this is the aging process. You know, you got Gallagher's. They got the cool glass room when you walk in there. And, uh, you know, everyone says they age their steaks. How do you do it differently? And what makes yours so special? Uh, well, I'm not sure how many restaurants actually dry age their own steaks and beef on premise. I know that we are one of them. Um, it's been a tactic and a procedure that is costly in itself. So a lot of people are kind of jumping to where they're having somebody else age their beef for them and then ship it over to them. We do, are the opposite of that. We get our steaks in. We order our steaks 30 days before they even get put on your plate. And it's, uh, it's a, like a slow humidity and temperature controlled environment um, that just naturally breaks down the, uh, the fatty tissues inside the beef. It's a, just a natural tenderizing process. I've been into your, you showed me the, uh, the, the steakhouse room the last time I was there. One of only the few people that have been into that territory. Well, I thank you very much, Steve. That was pretty amazing. Very amazing. And uh, that's probably the difference. So I, I guess other restaurants may say they're aged, but they buy them already aged. So it's not the Correct. same as what you not, guys are Not buying. saying that they're not dry aged or wet aged in their own way. It's just we do that process on our own. So we have 100% control. Yep. You guys have been chosen as the best steakhouse in New Jersey, but not only that, for several years, we've also been chosen as the best seafood restaurant in the state of New Jersey and the best sushi restaurant. That's pretty uh, remarkable. How do you how do you have a one restaurant that's the best in all three different food categories? Quality. Simple. That's all it is. It's just it's the best quality that's out there. It's presented to you in a very efficient, friendly and timely fashion. And it's very simple. It's just consistency is the key to the game. You can do the same thing every single time. You're a winner. People are tired of rolling the dice. They're tired of going out and having a good meal one day, inviting their friends, expecting the same thing, and then they get a subpar meal. Doesn't make them look good, and it's just uh, inconsistent. Uh, well, a good friend of mine, Saucy, he goes from uh, Wyckoff to the Ranger games, and he stops at the River Palm Terrace before the hockey games. So I, I, he goes there all the time, but he loves the Andy roll. And I've been eating the Andy roll now, you know, listen, I love sushi. I've been to sushi, uh, Yamasada, which was the, one of the good restaurants in Manhattan, the first uh, sushi restaurant to be in the Zagats, you know, 20 most uh, popular restaurants in Manhattan. And your guy, the, the, the Andy roll is just remarkable. It's just better than other sushi. I don't understand why, but it was just so tender and like the, Meat was creamy. It was just unbelievable how good that was. Well, I, I have found out over the last 14 years that not only is it the protein and the product that you use, but it's actually the chef that puts it all together. 
Because when we started sushi, we tried it in all three of our locations. And uh, over a quick period of time, we we were able to pretty much decipher that it's the chef as well as the product that makes the item. Because in our other two locations, sushi didn't take over the way that it has in our Edgewater location. 14 years ago, chef sushi chef Andy Lynn was all by himself. 14 years fast forward, there are four gentlemen that work seven days a week upstairs just to put all the sushi that's required on the plate to get it downstairs to the dining room. It's a big difference. Oh, yeah. It's nice when you get a nice big uh, cowboy steak or a huge sirloin there. You can have a little sushi on the side to go with it. It's quite a nice combo, you know. New Jersey surf and turf. <laughs> exactly. How has um how has business been the last couple of years? Um, uh, overall, I'm sure you've been pretty busy. The time I've been in there. What's what's been the challenges? Well, I think you can pretty much take 2020 and cross it off uh, the calendar as being uh, not a record breaker for anybody for obvious reasons. Um, we are fortunate enough to have thousands of regular customers that, uh, in my opinion, choose to eat nowhere else. So when they finally got their comfortability factor back and they were able to come out and venture outside of their house and go back out and kind of get normal again and dine out in restaurants, the first place they decided to choose was River Palm Terrace Restaurant in Edgewater. And they just keep coming back. And you're, and you're full all the time. You need reservations basically every weekend. Every day is Saturday night. Every day is Saturday night. Yeah, it's really good. That's why they all come there. I uh, got a question about the front off the front part of the house and the back part. Software solutions, reservations, people booking a lot of reservations online, or is that something in, inventory control? Is, are you guys using different apps and different software to do those things, or you just do it the old way that you've been doing it well, for years and years? Uh, about two years ago, we ventured off the big black book where we were handwritten reservations in the corner of the page on the side of the page. Um, and we went to a digital system called Resi, very similar to the Open Table platform. Yep. Uh, our guests are able to make reservations from the comfort of their own home and a time slot that's open and available for everybody. Um, it helps manage the dining room so we don't overbook. Um, and it just gives us the ability to kind of look to see what time frames we need to kind of focus on to get that first turn or that last turn in. Um, as far as back of the house, we're gravitating to new computer systems as we speak. I think we launch a week from this coming Monday, um, and that software in itself will help us do a lot of the extra back order inventory that we don't have to use a pen and paper so so much. So we're we're, gravi we're gravitating towards the technological age. How about? Um Profit margins on both the beverage and food. Is there, is there uh, big differences on that? Either the bar area versus the food area? I think uh, general knowledge that you get a little more of a profit margin off of your, your beverages than you do your proteins. But with the supply chain, the way that it's currently running now, everything has jumped up higher than it used to be. So it's, uh, it's, it's a challenge to make sure that you can price yourself out to where the customers are going to come in and order what they like and then not drop their wallet, you know, and are able to come back and do it again. But we have to obviously make a profit. So it's, uh, it's, we're in an interesting little s section of our uh, business now to we're just, we're trying to, I don't know how to word it. I'm, I'm rambling on here. Um, coordinate the, where the pricing works for you and us at the same way. Right, exactly. Do you guys do takeout at all? I, I never, I've never really even thought about that. But do you actually will do place takeout orders? People can call in and pick them up or deliver. Right. We we did a, a pickup service prior to quarantine and all that. But when we started to get in and everyone was kind of locked into their houses, we did do a takeout and delivery setup, and that has continued to run very successfully since then. Um, you can order through our website online for uh, curbside pickup, or you can have delivery. Do you have that stopped at a certain time because you get too busy in the, uh, the main hours? Or is, well, can you we, do that anytime? We have the ability to kind of control what comes in and what. And if I have to shut off online um, takeout orders and just do it in-house only for the moment for customer call-ins, then we can do that. Obviously, we don't want to have an hour and a half or two-hour wait time for your order. That just doesn't make any right. whole lot of positive sense. 
No, no. I was thinking about the near name, the River Palm Terrace, and then obviously you had the Palm Restaurant, which was the original steak and big lobster place was down the road from my house in 20th Street. Uh, it's, it was interesting enough, their name came from, I think they were supposed to be called La Parma, and the guy in the New York City office of registering businesses put down the Palm, and by the time they figured it out, they just kept the name. It was cheaper than going back and trying to change the name to La Parma. You know, it looks like that's the city in northern Italy, Parmesan cheese. So right. you're the River Palm Terrace. How did you guys right. get your name? Uh, well, back in 1983, I believe it was the middle of September is when we launched uh, the location in Edgewater. Um, across the river was a restaurant, as you mentioned before, called The Palm. And they were the leader of the game. And they were the hot spot. And they were the place to go. Like you just said, big steaks, heavy, you know, heavy wines, big lobsters, big boys night out. So um, as my boss, John Campbell, used to say, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. So we tried to recreate their recipe for success on the other side of the Hudson River. Oh, you've done a, done a great job. Jen, I'll yeah. tell you, you're, I think your restaurant's better than theirs now. I think once these restaurants, they start to go, uh, they franchise or they just have all these multiple locations, it just doesn't seem as good anymore. Well, uh, I think I don't, you you kind of lose a little of that extra TLC when you start spreading out your, your love, you know, 10, 12 restaurants, you know, strong. You're exactly right. Because, you know, your service at your restaurant is amazing. So it's probably very hard to duplicate the service you get at your Edgewater restaurant. So yeah. I can understand there. Listen, there's a lot of talented staff out there, but there's sometimes it's just difficult to find that right mix of blend of everybody that works together. You know, it's all it's all a team effort, you know, and uh, there's just so many good, real smart, talented people out there that benefit the business. Uh, it takes a guy like you. You're the general manager. For, you've been there 33 years. You run that place like a well-oiled machine. How long has some of your waiters been there? You got waiters been there a long time? I have. Currently, we have two staff members in the front of the house that have been with us for 25 years or more. A good Amazing. handful between 16 and 25 years. And that's a testament wow. to the business because it's a very transient uh, business and industry. People coming in just to make enough money to pay rent and their cell phone bill and their rent and their, their car payment, trying to figure out what it is they want to do for their career. So they jump into the restaurant business, this bartender, waiter, um, just put some money in their pocket. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break, Steve. We'll be right back. Uh, remember, listeners, any questions at all about your portfolio or any questions about anything, feel free to give me a call. My number is 518-255-8854, or you can email me at edgardner at cutterco.com. We'll be right back. All opinions expressed by Ed Gardner and or his guests on The Money Nation Show are solely Ed Gardner's and or his guests' opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Cutter & Company or any of their affiliates. You should not treat any opinion expressed by Ed Gardner and our guests as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a particular strategy, but only in as an expression of their opinion. Ed Gardner's and his guests' opinions are based on information he considers reliable, but neither Cutter & Company nor affiliates and or subsidies warrant its completeness or accuracy, and it should not be relied upon as such. Always talk to your financial advisor before making such decisions. Welcome back to Money Nation. So, Steve, I'm sure you got a lot of famous people come into the restaurant. You're right next to New York City or right over the bridge. Well, tell me some of the stories of some of the interesting uh, people coming to dine at the River Palm Terrace. Um, well, I think we're we're lucky enough to be as well known as we are over the last 38 years that there's certainly a buzz around town that we're the place to be. Um, have definitely had our share of celebrities that come and go, but we kind of like to treat them as just regular human beings and put them at a nice little table in the corner and not have that that fawn over fanfare. They want to kind of get out of the limelight once in a while and be a regular person. Um, our local celebrity sports teams, uh, we have a lot of newscasters from New York City. Um, we had the uh, pleasure of uh, Chef John George visit us about six, seven months ago. And when you're in this industry and you have somebody like that walk through the door, it just, just kind of, it's, a, it's an awe factor. You know, oh, yeah, and, great, and, great French restaurant. Tremendous, tremendous, just an icon and a knowledgeable individual. And he comes in just to stand back and watch him enjoy what we do 
tremendously. It's just was just a great a great pleasure. And uh, a lot of the New York Giants will walk through the door and I'm six foot three and I'm 250 pounds and they put me in my place. And I show a lot of respect to those big individuals. You had a lot of Giants throughout the years. So, Steve, you had many of the New York Giants, the old timers like the uh, Phil Sims, Lawrence Taylor. Sure, any of those guys? sure. I, I've been the I've been with River Palm and Edgewater since the very early 90s. Um, and back then we had Dan Reeves was the head coach through Bill Parcells, um, Lawrence Taylor. We had uh, Otis Anderson and Odell Beckham Jr. was in. Eli Manning was in um, here and there. We had the entire defensive line upstairs one time. They wow. had an, 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 and after a loss on a Sunday, they recalled a meeting and they had them all upstairs on a Monday night and talked about having a room full of big individuals. I'm six foot three and I'm 250 pounds. And I was the smallest one in the room. Amazing. Amazing. And on your night off, you're working very hard. I see you and they're working hard. When you get a night off, what do you like to do? Do you go into the city to restaurant? Do you just go watch a movie? What do you do on your nights off when you're, I mean, you get to eat at the best restaurant, one of the best restaurants in the country. What do you do on your nights off? Well, I generally, if everything works the way that it's supposed to, I get my two days off in a row. I'd like to spend one day in the kitchen cooking for my family. And the other day, I like to listen to the front door ring and have a pizza pie or some Chinese food get delivered to my doorstep. There you go. Just stay home and relax on the couch. Enjoy the tranquility. Exactly. Any other, any other last parts of the people who, uh, any good stories you have? Anything more before we take off? Uh, I think one of the best things that I get to witness in my restaurant is the interaction of my staff with my guests, or shall I say our staff with our guests. When I started, it was a family with their little bright eyed, blue eyed, little nine year old boy. Now that nine year old boy is the 40 year old bringing in his children. So you just see that change of generation and the engagement that the customers have with our staff and vice versa, I think is just, it, it's something that you don't see a lot. Um, we have a very personal aspect to what we do and people are treated with a name rather than just a number and a face. Um, it's a family. It's a giant, giant family that we have. Yep. It's outstanding service. Though. Not only is the food outstanding, but the service is just as outstanding. That's why you said people come back. And if they want to go eat, uh, I was talking about the River Palm Terrace last night in Albany. A couple guys up here, they want to come on down. We're going to be coming down and bring a group down. So yeah. people know about you guys. You've done a great job for all these years. And uh, one of the best steakhouses in the country. That's what oh, I think. Thank you very much. So, much appreciated. Steve, I'll be down there shortly. Thank you very much for being on Money Nation. I want you to have a great day and a great weekend. Uh, Ed, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Listeners, any questions at all about your investments, always feel free to give me a call at 518-255-8854, or you can email me at edgardner at cutterco.com. Thanks, everyone, for being with us on Money Nation. <laughs>